All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makar Kudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule impeccably well. Shalom to the hopeful elect pushing his truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe in the sincere hopes of being delivered in these last days. This is Dabari Akanan from the GMS England branch. And um, this will serve as a brief video. You know, it's not going to be too long. And it's going to be based upon this video that you see here on the screen, which was taken from University of Cambridge Museum's YouTube channel. And... Um, it's entitled Research Spotlight Curious Cures in Cambridge Libraries. All right. And I had come across, you know, this video while I was, um, you know, researching and looking up, you know, particular uh, pre prestigious, if you will, you know, libraries out here in the UK. And, um, you know, this came up on the... Um, on the algorithm, you know, while I was searching and, you know, it's got some, um, very interesting, you know, information in there regarding, you know, natural remedies, you know, regarding, um, as they say in the title, curious cures, you know, from the past, you know, from the, um, medieval time period. All right. And what it really shows you and, um, reveals is that, you know, these, if you will, sophisticated Edomites, you know, Edomites that would, you know, think themselves to be sophisticated, they really know about, you know, the herbs, all right? They, they really know about, you know, natural cures, you know, so on and so forth. But that is not the depiction or the message, all right, or the narrative that's pushed out there in society, all right? They don't really want people to know about, you know, remedies and ways of how to um, treat yourself, you know, in the society. They want you to run to, you know, the um, the physician of no value in order to um, treat your symptoms, but not actually, you know, treat, you know, the actual problem that's at hand. And that's how Esau makes his money, all right? That's how the industry make their money. So they keep you on a continuous cycle, all right, of pure death and destruction, all right, until, you know, you cease to exist, all right, and that's pure death. And that's why the scriptures tell us, you know, in the, in the book of Habakkuk that, you know, Esau is as death, all right, and let's get that right quick and then we'll get into the video. Because this kingdom, you know, that we're living in, all right, this, um, this reign, you know, of um, Esau Edom is filled with pure pain, you know, it's filled with trauma and it's filled, you know, with pure, um, with pure uh, sickness, all right, because he is not a healer, all right, Esau is a natural born killer, <laughs> you know, and that's why uh, when we go to the book of Romans, you know, it tells us that he's a vessel of wrath that is, a, that is a fit for destruction. You know, so um, let's, let's uh, start off with this and we'll go to the video. Now it says, say, this is Habakkuk chapter 2, and we'll start from verse 5. And it says, Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. So the main point, you know, that I quoted was that he is as death, all right? Esau Edom is as death, all right? And again, you know, he is that vessel of wrath that is fitted to destruction. And that's why under his rulership, all right, under his um authority, all right, nothing is thriving in life, you know? Everything is declining. You know, everything is decaying under the rulership of Esau Edom. Whether you want to talk about the people, all right, whether you want to talk about, you know, wildlife, you know, you got all of these um, animals and insects and, you know, all kind of different beasts and creatures that are going extinct, 
That's under the watch of Esau Edom, all right? Nothing is flourishing. The vibration of the whole earth is under complete decay, you know, under this man Esau Edom. And that's why, ultimately, he must be removed from the power seat, okay? Because he's been proven to be a terrible ruler and he must be fired, all right? Esau Edom must be fired, all right? And once he is fired and moved out of the way through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, that's when you're going to see the earth flourish, okay, under the rightful rulers, you know, the Israelites, all right, beginning with, you know, Yahweh Shai, King David, and the elect. Now, um, let's go to this video, and um, we'll play, you know, a few excerpts from the video, and then we'll go into a few other scriptures that I have uh, lined up, and Lord willing, you know, it's um, edifying. And just to show you, you know, there's only um, 675 views on this um, on this on this particular video, man. You know, there's only 675 views, so this is not something they're pushing out there, you know, for everyone to uh, watch. All right, this is for the, you know, the few, you know, <laughs> if you will, um, sophisticated, more sophisticated, um as they will call themselves, you know, Edomites in the, in their circles, you know, in their realms, okay? This is not, you know, put out there for everyone. So the project is called Curious Cures in Cambridge Libraries and it has been funded by a research resources awards grant from the Wellcome Trust. And the um, objective of the project is to catalogue, digitise um, and conserve approximately 180 medieval manuscripts in Cambridge Libraries. So they want to catalogue, digitalize and conserve all of these medieval manuscripts concerning, um, you know, natural cures, all right, for various different, um, you know, ailments and um, diseases, okay? That contain medical recipes. The project will also transcribe the text of those recipes. We know where they are in the manuscripts, roughly. We don't quite know how many there are, but we think about 8,000. The focus of the project on... Um... And, you know, this really, you know, shows you that, you know, Esau, all right, the so-called white man is a hypocrite, all right? Because here you have it, you have these, um, as they call them, um, I won't pronounce the whole word, you know, for the, for the um, caution of being, you know, receiving a strike. You know, you have the uh, listic, you know, doctors you know, that deal specifically, you know, with the herbs and, you know, treating particular ailments the natural way. And they demonize those people, all right? They actually demonize those people. And there's even times where, you know, them people, those people have been, um, you know, mysteriously killed, you know, for pushing, you know, particular information on how you can, um, you know, heal yourself from particular ail ailments, all right? And that just shows you, you know, the wickedness and the hypocrisy of Esau Edom, all right? He will present it to you the way he wants to present it to you, all right? And when you, you know, research a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, remedies, you know, that these um, falsifiers, you know, use, you know, the um, basis of what they're using always is derived from something that's natural, you know, from a herb or for a plant. But then what do they do? They add their demonic touch onto it, you know, their demonic concoction onto it that then turns it into something that, you know, treats the symptom, but in the light end, you know, it, it kills you, okay? And that's, you know, these are the kind of people we're dealing with, all right? They're slick devils, okay? And they've been getting, you know, away with this for a very long time. Medical manuscripts, medieval medical recipes, chimes with the health and well-being strand um, of this um, research initiative. Recipe material provides brilliant insights into medieval medical culture. It takes you very close to the patient practitioner. Into
So again, in these prestigious universities, you know, in these um, prestigious libraries, you know, they have a whole wealth of information dealing with ailments, dealing with, you know, how to mend, you know, particular ailments and diseases, so on and so forth. They have it written down. They have it stored in the vaults and they're showing you right now. So why ain't this, you know, why ain't this wisdom or right, taught in, you know, the, um, in the medical industries, okay? Why, why aren't these things utilized, you know, for the betterment of the people, okay? This, this shows you that, you know, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Let's get that right quick, okay? This just shows you that the people that are ruling the earth, being Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right? They're not ruling with the intent of bettering the people. They're not ruling with the intent of um, creating a righteous rulership upon the face of the earth and a healthy, you know, uh, people upon the face of the earth. They're ruling and promoting and um, enforcing, you know, the ways of death, all right? The ways of the left-hand side. Now, this is Job 9 and 24, and it reads, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? All right, so the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? All right, so the rulership of the earth, all right, has been um, handed on to the wicked, all right, beginning with the, um, the banking families, the elite banking families that rule the earth in secrecy. All right, the Illuminati, okay, the elites of the so-called white men, okay, when we go to uh, Psalm 64, you know, it tells you about the secret counsel of the wicked, okay, these are the, 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 the shadow leaders that really, you know, rule the world and that really make the decisions, okay, it was their decision to make sure that people never get access to, you know, um, real health um, boosting, you know, herbs, you know, the, the people have been taught, you know, that that's a joke and that doesn't really work. And that, you know, anyone that's into that is to be mocked. All right. That's what the people in general have been taught. Yet still, you know, you have these particular Edomites that utilize, you know, these, um, these natural things. Okay. Interaction, but they're quite difficult for researchers to access and analyze. The recipes themselves are also very variable and mutable, so you might have any number of different recipes for toothache, which all start the same way, but which use a different combinations of ingredients or different preparatory techniques. And it's those sorts of subtleties and variations that we're trying to capture in this uh, project. All of the digital images that we'll be producing of the manuscripts, together with the detailed descriptions, and that the catalogues will be producing and the transcriptions of the recipes will all be published on the Cambridge Digital Library. So they'll be accessible to researchers across the world, anybody with an internet connection who wants to take a look at them. So for instance, here we have um, what is very much a, a homemade compilation of medical recipes. So it contains a variety of different recipes. So what does that tell you? That tells you that Back in, you know, these, um, back in these times, people had, you know, their own, you know, books of, uh, you know, healing, uh, you know, healing, you know, herbs and so on and so forth that would be beneficial unto you, all right, depending on whatever you was experiencing at the time. Now, people nowadays, they don't have that, all right, they don't see the benefit in that as soon as, you know, they... You know they have uh, something that's wrong with them. What do they do? They run, you know, to their, to their, um, to their doctors. All right, they or they go to the, you know, the hospital, so on and so forth, and then they leave, you know, um, sicker than they was when they entered. All right, and that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and that just shows you, all right, that you know this system is not built to better the people. All right, this system is not built to better the people. It's built to destroy the people. For biting of an adder, uh, and it says, take lily root and pound it and drink it. Uh, for canker in a woman's breast, for the migraine, 
for the falling evil, um, or the morbo caduco in its Latin name, uh, that may be epilepsy. Which, you know, most of these, um, most of these things he's going into, you know, these are common things that people experience in society now. All right. These are common things. And, you know, he mentioned, you know, the fallen evil, you know, which is uh, epilepsy, which all of these, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, mental, mental, um, you know, illnesses, so on and so forth, you know, all illnesses are, are, are demons. All right. It all goes back, you know, to demons, man. OK. And, you know, this is something that, you know, Esau is not going to tell you. All right. Because Esau has removed the spiritual aspect of the understanding, you know, in, in day-to-day -day life. You know, people back then, you know, they knew certain things. Why do you think it was called a falling evil, right? When you had um, epilepsy, that, that was called a falling evil. And when you research, you know, epilepsy, people will be scared of people that had epilepsy, all right? Because, you know, you didn't know what was happening to them. It's, it's, it's quite a fearful thing. If you've ever witnessed someone have a, a epileptic fit, you know, or a seizure or anything of that sort, you know, if you're experiencing it for the first time and you're not used to it, it's a fearful thing, all right? And that's why people will be scared, you know, when they witness things of that nature because they had a basic understanding to know that, you know, that was a spirit on that person that was causing that to happen. Just like, you know, any other ailment you can have, it really just goes back to a spirit, okay? You have an evil spirit on you. We have examples of that in the scripture, all right? But really... You know, Esau is a um a useless physician, all right? And let's get that in the uh, book of Job, all right? And then we'll get, you know, how a physician is supposed to be in the book of Sirach. Now, this is Job chapter 13 and verse 4, and it reads, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value, all right? And that's Esau Edom, all right? That's the so-called white man. He is a physician of no value, all right? His, his intent is not here to better anyone or to heal anyone, all right? But his own inner circle. But his, his intent is to, um, you know, spread, is to spread, um, you know, death, okay? His intent is to spread death and to spread, you know, um, you know, wickedness, man, all right? Ultimately, that's what, you know, this man is doing. All right, and no one is 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 being um, no one is being you know uh, healed you know by you know Esau Edom's devices, okay? Because they don't lead on to healing; they lead on to death. Now let's get um, Sirach, uh chapter thirty-eight and verse one, and it reads: "Honor a physician with the honor due unto him, for he uses which ye may have of him." For the Lord have created him. For of the most high cometh healing. Alright, so of Yahweh Bar Shim Yahshai cometh healing, man. Alright, and that's why it's essential, you know, it's a per imperative for you to pray unto Yahweh Bar Shim Yahshai when you are sick. Alright, because the Lord is the healer, ultimately. Alright, it doesn't matter, you know, how much herbs you take. If you ain't, you know, using, you know, those herbs you know, with faith, you know, and with, um, and with fervent prayer, then them herbs will just, you know, go straight through your system and, you know, <laughs> and they, they, they just won't work. You know, the law can do that, man. All right. Or the law can make it work. You know, it's all up to you. How about Shem All right. For of the most high come with healing and he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head and in the sight of great men, he shall be in an admiration, in admiration. The Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them, all right? So you have about Shimei Shai created medicines out of the earth, all right? That's why you're supposed to deal with the, you know, hundreds of thousands of different herbs that you have about Shimei Shai set up, all right, for the, for, for the service of man, all right, as it tells us in the scriptures, all right? Not, you know, to run to Esau or Edom, to receive, you know, a demonic concoction, all right, that's going to cause you problems immediately or, you know, rather later on down the line, all right, because that's, the, that's the, always the end result with, you know, trusting in Esau or Edom, all right, he'll give you something, you know, you might feel better for a few days, but then you're going to develop another problem, 
and then to treat that other problem, he's going to give you something else and then you're going to get another problem. Okay, and this is it's a never ending cycle of death, all right. And it says, And the Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? And he have given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works, which such doth he heal men and taketh away their pains. Of such doth the apothecary make a confection, and of his works there is no end. And from him is peace over all the earth. My son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. All right. So in thy sickness, be not negligent, negligent, but pray unto Yahabashim Yahushai, and he will make you whole. Okay, so prayer is a big part of you becoming well again, all right, of your ailments being, you know, healed, okay? That's that's a big part of it, all right? But, you know, we must also bear in mind that we're in hell, okay? And that this is also a part of the curses that were bestowed upon us for going against Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right? So sometimes the Lord might not, actually remove you know that particular element that you are suffering from man because it's just your lot you know to have that you know until you know the lord sees it fit where you either get you know healed you know through the spirit and power of yahweh Hashem shai by a way of a brother in the times to come or until you get your new body all right and that's why we also have to remember that we we are in hell man all right and we're always going to have a constant reminder as to why we don't want to be in this kingdom, all right? And your constant reminder might just be that, you know, you get ailments, all right? Now, you know, me, myself, you know, I get ailments, you know, quite often, you know, I'll, I'll be dealing with, you know, things here and there, but then sometimes I'm good, you know, it just shows you it's a spiritual thing, you know, and I'm not the only one, you know, you have an abundance of brothers out there that be dealing with, you know, particular ailments and, you know, sicknesses and, you know, it's, it's all demons, right? but there's going to come a point, you know, when your Shai comes back and we're going to be transformed, you know, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to have new bodies and we're never going to um, feel pain again. All right. It tells you in the book of Revelations that the Lord shall, re shall remove all tears, man. All right. So that time is coming and we look forward to that time. All right. Um, it says, leave off from sin and all that thine hands are right and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Give a sweet savour and a memorial of fine flour and make a fat offering as not being. And it says, then give place to the physician for the Lord have created him. Let him not go from thee for thou hast need of him. There is a time when in their hands there is good success. All right, so there is times when you know, you would go to the physician and it would be good success. He would prescribe you to take, you know, whatever, you know, it might be garlic, you know, it might be some other herb, you know, hyssop, so on and so forth. And then you will have good success. And it says here, for they shall also pray unto the Lord that he would prosper that, which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. So even the physician back then would pray unto Yahweh Hashem Yahweh all right, when he would um prescribe you, you know, these um these uh you know righteous concoctions, man. So it's not all about you know the concoction and the herb as such, it's really about praying unto Yahweh Shim Yao Shai and trusting in Yahweh Shim Yao Shai. Okay, because it's the Lord that's gonna active activate you know those um ingredients to make them actually benefit you in the first place, okay. So that's 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 what it's really about. It's all about trusting in your Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, um, <coughs> let's go back to the video. Bad breath, uh, for trembling hands, uh, for toothache. So there's a whole range of of remedies for um, you know day to day as well as more serious complaints. Medical recipes are very relatable. They deal with the kinds of ailments that we still suffer with today. Headaches, migraines, diarrhea, sores, boils, cancers, that kind of thing. 
but they're also a reminder of the pain and precarity of medieval life. There's recipes for rankled wounds. You know, when you have, um, you know, cancer in this society, you know, what do they do? They they blast you with um, with radiation. They blast your ass with radiation, and um, you know, it makes your hair fall out. It kills both the good cells and the bad cells in your body. All right, so if you make it through that through that um you know zapping <laughs> i'll call it then you're gonna be terribly weak and you're gonna be feeble and you might die anyway okay and you know that's esau's way of trying to basically um you know rid you know you of the uh, cancer cells in your body which is proven that that way you know is not sound all right that's not a good way to tackle you know that particular um ailment okay It'll be better, you know, to utilize, you know, the herbs, you know, something that's actually going to benefit you and, you know, cause the problem that you're experiencing. But Esau doesn't do it that way, you know. And my, my, my granddad, all right, on my father's side, you know, this back going back more than 10 years, you know, I remember he had a cancer of the stomach. And, um, you know, that was a very agonizing and uh, painful death you know, that he experienced and he, you know, was, um, you know, well clued up about the process and that, and, you know, and of what was going to happen to him. All right. In the, in the days of his demise, he, you know, he was well aware of what he was going through, man, which was even more, you know, crazy, you know, to, to deal with and to see him go through it. But I remember, um, you know, after he got that, you know, that therapy, all right, that zapping, Shortly after that, you know, but a few weeks, you know, he was gone, all right? His body couldn't handle it. You know, he shriveled up, you know, he got proper skinny, he couldn't eat properly, you know? So that didn't make any sense, man, all right? But that's how Esau gets down. <clears throat> are worms that eat the eyelids. So we're dealing with a, a, a time where there weren't anesthetics, um, as we would know them now. There are antibiotics, as we would know them now. The insights that that can provide into the way in which people lived um, and survived and sought to manage and monitor their health, I think, is very revealing of medieval life and culture more generally. Yes, it's very exciting to be to be working on this project, and it's going to be shedding light on a really important part of our collection that is heavily used by researchers, but which I think isn't particularly well known more more generally and I would suspect is not known about by the general public, but which nevertheless contains lots of really intriguing and interesting material. All right, so that's the end of that video. Um, I'm going to cut it off there. You know, Lord willing, this um, video is edifying, and um, until, the, until the next time, I'll say Shalom.